Hello everyone and welcome to the first Bite Size of 2017, and no, Bite Size is not a pun for the topic of today's video, um, so yeah. Anyways, my hands are on fire, I was just got back from the park and I was on one of those bar things, you know, flipping around and stuff. They hurt like hell. Just had to inform you about that. Anyways, let's get right into the video. So a couple days ago I went to this aquarium and one of their first exhibits was actually located in the bathroom right above the sink. It was a huge shark tank. It was absolutely amazing to look at. They had multiple different species of shark interacting in what looks like kind of a coral reef area. It was really cool to say the least. But it got me wondering. I saw all these different really cool shark species, but there's one that's missing. The one that makes us fear to go into the ocean and is responsible for the movie Jaws. You all know what I'm talking about, the great white shark. I started to wonder if we could ever keep a great white shark in captivity, and if it had ever been attempted before. So I did some research and here's what I found. It in fact has been attempted before, multiple times. The first of which was a shark that was held in captivity at Marine Land of the Pacific in 1955. It only lasted for less than a day. The first great white to be held for a significant amount of time, 16 days, was at SeaWorld in 1981. And the most successful of all was in 2004 at the Monterey Bay Aquarium in California, which exhibited a female great white shark for just 198 days. Now it's important to remember that that shark was a juvenile, so it made it a little bit easier to keep it in captivity. But there was a recurring pattern throughout all of these. No matter what, they all ended up failing, rather it be they had to release the shark back into the wild, such as the one in the Californian Aquarium, or the shark just died. Now there are multiple reasons why they either die or they're released back into the wild. For example, that little juvenile shark in California attacked two other sharks in its tank. But other ones are much more serious, and for that I want to bring us back to just a year ago from today. There was an 11.5 foot male great white shark that was caught off the coast of Japan, and for a few days was the only great white shark in captivity in the world. After it arrived at Japan's, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, aquarium. Now once they got the shark into the tank, some problems started instantly. The shark refused food, and it kept on ramming its head into walls. So you might be wondering, why is that? Well, first off, for the food problem, uh, great white sharks require to eat living food. They can eat chum, as we have seen them do in the ocean, but it starts to drive them nuts, especially when they're in captivity, not knowing where they are, and they're not given live food. They're not really, um, I guess you could say, motivated to eat that food. And why did it keep on ramming its head into walls? Well, this is definitely the answer. The great white shark is a migratory species, and they travel great distances. Scientists have found that tag sharks sometimes end up at the other side of the world. You need a huge amount of water in order to sustain a creature like this. If you even had a tank the size of your house, it would go nuts. It needs to have room to move around. And this problem is recurring. In many instances, including the most recent one in Japan, great white sharks that were briefly held in captivity have hit their nose on the glass walls. The one held in the Monterey Bay even developed an injury from continually smashing into the glass. So this is obviously a huge setback if you ever want to keep a great white shark in captivity. Now for that great white shark in Japan, it only lasted three days before dying. Now that's a shame, but I do want to say if we are ever able to find a way that allows the creature to live in captivity, we should do it. But if we don't and we keep on doing this, it's practically just animal cruelty. Don't get me wrong, I'd love to see a great white shark in a tank someday. I'd love just to be able to go to the local aquarium and see one sitting right in front of me looking through the glass. That would be amazing. In fact, when you see the footage from the one that was caught in Japan, it looks fantastic, right? Imagine how cool that would be. But the sad thing is, I don't know when that day is going to come. There's just so many requirements that we would need in order to keep the shark alive. In fact, one of the other ones I forgot to mention was that great white sharks have to keep on swimming in order to live. And if they want to fall asleep, they have to find a current. And if the aquarium doesn't have a proper current or a flow of water, if you want to put it that way, they're going to never be able to rest and they will die. Now, I also want to get something else across. There are a lot of people who are just plain out against keeping all sharks in captivity. But to those people, I say this. A shark, just like any other animal, is very valuable. And some of these species are extremely vulnerable to extinction or have already gone extinct in the wild, and we need to keep them preserved for future generations to either learn from our mistakes or to learn more about these beautiful creatures. I'm not against keeping sharks in captivity at all. In fact, like I just said, if there was a way that we could keep a great white shark in captivity, I'm all in for it. But until that day comes, let's just not do it. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this segment. I thought it was pretty interesting, but now we're going to move into future freshman opinions.
All right, so now we're moving into future freshman opinions. It's been a couple weeks since I did my last future freshman opinions, and a lot of stuff has happened in the world, but I'm just gonna focus on four main topics, some of the big things that are happening in my country and across the world. Um, so first off, I wanna talk about the uh, intercontinental ballistic missile that uh, North Korea says that they have the capability of making or working on right now. Um, so this is a huge threat. As I just said, it's an intercontinental ballistic missile. This is cause for concern. Um, and as we're noticing, every day North Korea is making progress in their nuclear program, and this is just another step forward. And I know uh, foreign leaders have, of course, condemned uh, have contempt, condemned North Korea, um, and we've actually placed even stronger sanctions on them. But the thing is, is that this is the horrifying part. Uh, President-elect Donald Trump's response to this was, it just won't happen. And I wasn't even gonna talk about this story until I heard about this, because that just pisses me off. You are the president-elect. You're going to be leading the free world, okay? Uh, the United States, man. You're gonna be president in the United States. And if your response to a threat like this, which is extremely scary, even coming from the hermit nation, um, if you say that, that message is awful. That's an awful message to send out. Do you know what Japan and South Korea are thinking? They must be horrified if you hear, if, if they just hear, oh, by the way, there's this huge threat, we have to take some actions against this, and then the president, the future president of the United States of America just goes, eh, won't happen, perfectly fine. Like, what the hell? Like, imagine if Reagan came out during the Cold War and said, ah, oh, you know, we don't have to worry about, um, the, the damn Soviet, the damn Soviet Union, they won't nuke us, that'll never happen, you know, if he came out and said that, that's the equivalent of here. I know this is that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but still, honestly, I think that's a fair, you know, comparison. Um, so yeah, moving on from that, uh, uh, okay, this is obviously also big. Um, so, as you've already heard on Capitol Hill, it's been a lot of news has come out on Capitol Hill, we just swore in the new Senate. And uh, there's been a lot of talk about repealing Obamacare. And I kind of want to just throw my two cents here because both people on the left and right, of course, it's a very, it's a very partisan issue, Obamacare. And people on the left being more supportive of it and people on the right uh, pretty much against it. But there's, there's a big problem here because people on the right have talked about just repealing it completely. If, well, repealing it completely and getting rid of all the good things in Obamacare. Um, Obamacare is flawed, obviously. Obama thinks that himself. Um, but, like, there are some really good things in there that if we just repealed it completely, we'd be making no new ground. It would just be tearing down some awesome things that come with the ACA. Um, such as, I can stay under my parents' health care plan until I'm 26 rather than 24. It expanded Medicaid and Medicare. You cannot be denied having health care co coverage if you're female, and you can't be denied health care healthcare coverage if you have a pre-existing condition. Especially that last one are very important, okay? Those are all very, very important. And if we just tear down Obama, and this is one of the big things that I don't like about people saying, let's just repeal Obamacare, why don't we just build off of it, right? There are some leaks in it, right? Like for, let's, this is a good comparison. Let's say it's a dam, right? There are, it's, it's not the best dam, okay? There are some leaks in it. But instead of just tearing down the dam and having all the water come through, let's just fix those patches, right? Why take a step back? Now I know you're saying, well, yeah, there's fundamental problems with it, and I'm sure as hell there is, but as of right now, this is the best thing that we have. And here's the thing, they say they repeal it, right? Let's just say they do, which it almost, it, sadly, it does seem like that's what's gonna happen. They have no replacement plan. If you don't have a replacement plan, we're going back to what, what it was before 2008, where our premiums were rising even higher than they are right now, at alarming rates, right? We were spending so much money. Now we're still spending a lot of money, but it's become much better for us as citizens of the government still spewing up a lot of money because now we have people like um, people who have really bad illnesses that are on there and we're having to, you know, spit up a lot of money for it, um, who never had healthcare before. Um, but if you don't replace it, then it just the problem becomes worse. And not to mention, this is kind of like the doomsday factor here. If you remove it, there are people who are brain cancer patients, who well, let's just say all ca cancer patients, who are suffering from multiple other multiple other deadly illnesses. And if you take their health care away, that was at least spitting in just a little bit for the bill, so that they could afford it and keep their family members alive, they're gonna die. That's if you this that's how dire this is right they will die if we just repeal it and we don't have a replacement plan and i know there have been people on the right that have said like you know we need to we can't repeal it until we have a replacement i agree with those people um but you know to go for the left on this one uh they also said if it gets repealed we're not going to help uh to replace it no 
if it gets repealed, just suck it up and help replace it. We cannot, that, that would be devastating. We have to. And I know this is, you know, politics and you have to make your opponent look bad. And if you, if you don't replace it, it's going to really make your opponent look bad. But we're supposed to be working together here. So it's really weird, right? Everything's going down there. Um, and of course, there's that whole thing with the ethics office. I'm not going to go into that because that was all settled. That was also crazy, by the way. And uh, last thing I'm going to be talking about today is Russian hacking. Um, in case you're wondering, uh, yes, Russia did hack us, had hacked the DNC, and did influence this election. Now, before I go into that, I just want to say, even though they did this, um, they, I, I don't think the outcome would have changed, honestly. I still think Trump would have won, either way. But still, did it have a significant influence? We're not really going to know because we don't know what it would be like if uh, Russia hadn't hacked us. But here's the thing, and the reason why I'm saying Russia hacked us is because they did. There are still people who are denying it, even the president-elect himself, but no. It happened, okay? The CIA and the FBI both back up this, back, or the FBI had the investigation, the CIA backed it up, and multiple other intelligence agencies have all said, yes, this is a problem, all right? People, people on the left and most of the people on the right also recognize that. The president-elect doesn't, but everyone else does. We know that they affected this election, right? That they hacked us, and this is obviously a crime. Now, there's another thing. There's a, dear God, oh my, there's a lot of stuff going into this. But basically, one of the things I want to drive home is that a lot of people said, all right, let's say they did. Maybe it is true, which by the way, it is. Um, well, why does it matter now, right? They've done this before. The reason why it matters is because this was an election. This is a standard for our democracy, all right? And we aren't the only nation that this has happened to. It's happened over in Ukraine and multiple other European nations, okay? We're not the first. And denying this, denying that they did this, it looks really bad on us. Because what we're sending to Russia is, hey man, it's perfectly fine. We trust you over our own intelligence agencies. That is unacceptable, okay? Um, so, long story short, uh, Russia did hack us. We have to take action. And the thing is, is that... If Trump gets in office and he starts talking about, or he's like, you know, we got to have better relations with Russia, we need to work with that. I completely agree. But here's the thing. I'm not really into being friends with Russia as long as Putin's in office. I, just like any other, or at least most Americans, despise Putin. I despise everything about him. I despise how he's treated the LGBT community in his own country, the war crimes that he's committed in Syria, of course, all the things he's done in Ukraine. He has uh, everything that he's done to us, and not even to mention, you know how all of his political opponents just kind of disappear in Russia? Kind of ever wondered where they go? They're either just magically appear in jail, or they're dead somewhere. Hmm. He is not a good guy, all right? He is, I would describe him as a dictator. He honestly is. And He's done some really awful things, such as uh, the governorships. He appoints them now, and he's so nuts that he, instead of appointing people that are good for the job, he appoints his own bodyguards. He trusts no one, really. Um, but <coughs> don't like Putin. We don't need to work. We can work for better relations with Russia when he's out, all right? Of course, we can make progress now, but you don't praise Putin. That's all I'm saying. I know Trump has done that because, you know, they've been going back and forth, giving each other compliments, but still... I kind of went off topic, um, but, you know, uh, by the way, also, if, if you're one of those people who like Putin and who have gone to the, there's been polls that come out saying that people like Putin better than Obama in our country, you need to screw your head on correctly. I don't care how much you hate Obama, you really need to despise Putin more, honestly. And I know it's spreading hate, but still, that comparison, that's not fair whatsoever, saying that Obama's worse than Putin, because that is, that's, that's BS completely. I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat. That's BS. Um, but yeah. Anyways. I think that's it. That's all I'm going to talk about today. I have to thank you all for watching. This last part, of course, that was kind of just a rant going off into whatever. But I like these because I just kind of get to share my own opinion. Um, so it's fun, right? I enjoy it. Um, so I hope you all enjoyed the video today. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for all the support lately. It's been fantastic, guys. And we're going to be naming the armadillo. Eh, yes, he's right here. Do you guys notice him in the back? I don't know if it has him. I also have Earl here with his one leg. But enjoy, everyone. I'll see you later.